Good morning and welcome to today's meeting of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. Thank you to everyone who's here in person and everyone who's online as well. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Yes, good morning. Supervisor Sellers, absent today. Supervisor Galvin? Here. Supervisor Hickman? Here. Supervisor Gallardo, I understand, will be here shortly. Chairman Gates? Here. And Andrew Cummings, your OML attorney, is on the line. All right, thank, thank you. you so much for that. Um, so today's, uh, we always start our meetings with uh, the pledge and the prayer, and today's uh, prayer and pledge is being delivered by a guest of Supervisor Sellers, who's unable to join us today, but I'm happy to make the introduction on his behalf. Uh, O.D. Harris began his first term on the Chandler City Council in January of 2021. Uh, he is a proud U.S. Army veteran successful entrepreneur, author, and philanthropist. And he's also uh, someone that uh, Supervisor Sellers is proud to call a friend. Uh, Supervisor Sellers met OD in 2020 while they were both campaigning for the upcoming election. Uh, the things that Supervisor Sellers ad admire about OD are his energy and his inclusive approach for Chandler's very diverse community. His defined purpose in life is to inspire, uplift, and motivate people. His Ready, Set, Go Foundation makes this a reality by offering services to small businesses to help them grow and develop. It's my pleasure to introduce Councilmember O.D. Harris. Thank you, Chairman, and it's an honor to be here in the Board of Supervisors. Thank you so much for allowing me to um, share some time with you today. Thank you. And, and with that, I'll just ask everyone to stand uh, for the prayer and pledge. Lord God, we thank you for our chairman and our supervisors. Lord, we thank you that these individuals who you have ordained to be our leaders at a time such as this. And so, God, we ask that you will give them direction as they make difficult decisions on our behalf that they may govern the people with a balanced approach. Oh God, touch our supervisors in their families and those that they keep around them, that they may continue to work with the people and continue to be the best representatives we know we elected them to be. Amen. Amen. Let us all together recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, uh, council member. Really appreciate that. And thanks for all the great work you're doing out there in Chandler and please, Keep continue to uh, keep supervisor sellers in line. We we really would appreciate that. So, thanks again. You got it. All right. Well, uh, next uh, that was wonderful, and we've got another a wonderful presentation at this point now, and we are here to acknowledge our county manager Joy Rich on her 25 years of service. Uh, to Maricopa County, and uh, my colleagues and I joined together for a little video. So at this, at this, <laughs> surprise. So you do see the screen just went dark. Okay, it's back. I, I thought she she had a little switch, you know, that she had hit. But with that, if we can go ahead and uh, play the video, please. Joy is such an effective leader. So many projects that I've worked with uh, with Joy over the years, but. You know, one that um, we worked on recently that I just really appreciate her leadership on has been the expansion of maternity and paternity leave for our uh, employees here in Maricopa County. We have the most generous benefits on this for maternity and paternity leave of any government in the state of Arizona, and that's because of Joy. She's just a great leader. She represents the county well and re represents the agencies well, and she's She's recruited um, great people to come into the county. I've been able to see that and work with them, and she's just, she's been a superstar. Well, you know, actually, I, I met Joy in a different life. Uh, I, when I was uh, at the General Motors Desert Proving Ground, we had a lot of very unique zoning challenges. When I'd come to the county, I quickly learned 
that Joy Rich was the person I needed to talk to, that she knew how to deal with unique situations and find solutions. One particular uh, uh, situation that we had in District 5 was uh, August of 2021. We had a huge flood out in Gila Band. Uh, families were devastated. Joy was real quick on a Saturday morning uh, to, uh, to jump to action. She was able to bring in uh, the flood control, uh, Department of Transportation. She was able to bring in human services to help the people in, in Gila Band. Yeah, well, I'll never forget that the day I was appointed uh, back in December, just four months ago, it was just a whirlwind of a day. I was a supervisor that day. I didn't have any staff. I really didn't have an office. But Joy and her team were just so incredible in making me feel welcome. And every single day, she was just so responsive, answering all of my questions, all of my emails, basically any dumb question that I had. Uh, she took it all seriously. Joy, congratulations on 25 outstanding years of service with Maricopa County. Joy, we've got work to do in our years together, and there's still work to be done. So happy anniversary, and I hope to work with you for several years more. Joy, uh, your leadership in Maricopa County is, is a blessing for all of us, and it's hard to believe that you've been here for 25 years, but you continue to be the kind of leader that we can all be proud of. Joy, congratulations on 25 years. Happy anniversary. Well deserved. I know how much the entire county respects everything that you've done, and I re really appreciate everything you've done for me. So congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Joy, on 25 years of service. We appreciate your commitment to Maricopa County. So Joy, uh, I want to thank our team for putting together a great video. I think it expressed how uh, we all feel about you. I don't know if anyone wants to add anything to that. Mr. Uh, Gallardo, you had a great ending there, really charged you. it up. So I, I can't wait to hear what's next. No, um, no, I just, uh, Mr. Chairman, Joy, just appreciate it so much what you have done for the people of Maricopa County and particularly for District 5. I know you work for all five, but particularly in District 5, you have just been a blessing. Uh, I've always approached government as well as you do. As, as I try to approach it as a yes until they get me to a no, and you approach it as well. You know, you're, you don't say no. You try to figure out solutions to get through some of the hurdles and challenges. And most important, uh, as an elected official, you help us navigate through the politics, and I think that is so key. Uh, when you have someone on the top of the helm there trying to guide so many different uh, animals here, trying to get everyone together, marching together, uh, it's sometimes difficult. But to have someone uh, with your leadership uh, and your ability to kind of navigate the politics just makes it so much easier for many of us here uh, on this side of the, of the desk. Uh, so I just appreciate everything you have done. And, continue to look forward to working together. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Supervisor Galvin. Mr. Chairman, Joy, congratulations. And in the video, I mentioned how great you were to me when I first came on. But you know, in my six months here, exactly six months today, I see every single day how much you care about our employees of the county, our 13, 14,000 employees. And that comes through every single day. So I know you care about them a tremendous amount as in addition to how much you care about Maricopa County itself. So thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Vice Chair Hickman. I just always reflect with joy just how difficult it must be to have five bosses. And um, you've done so well. Uh, the Early into my first chairmanship, Tom Manos uh, retired, and I felt he retired just absolutely out from under me uh, with such a huge um, uh, responsibility it is to be county manager. And the one of the greatest decisions I've had a part in is, is hiring you and, and uh, putting you in that spot. And it was, had to be apparent to the entire county uh, during this pandemic and uh, what you've done and how much you've given uh, of your life to this county, um, your mother, and uh, how much time you have taken away from your family to do this job so well. And uh, I just wanted to thank you. And I am incredibly pleased that in my time here at the county, um, the vast majority of my time has is, is been with working with you as, as county manager, so I appreciate that very much. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, 
agree with everything that's been said, but you know, the, and you and you do understand politics, and you you do a great job in in considering all of that. But in the end, you're the CEO of this organization, and you're a great CEO. And what I particularly respect about you is the way that you lead and motivate the 13,000 employees across Maricopa County. And as uh, someone with three daughters, you're an incredible role model to young women and young men. Uh, and I, I just, I think you understand where organizations like this need to be in making uh, government and, and in particular Maricopa County, a place that people want to come and spend their careers, a place where they know they can make a difference uh, in this world. And so I just want to thank you for that. It's an honor to get to work with you every day. And so with that, um, if you'd like to say anything, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> certainly we should uh, yield time to you at this point. Mr. Chairman, just very briefly, I mean, 25 years ago, I thought I was just passing through, to be honest <laughs> with you. But once I got here and realized everything the county does, and the amazing people that we get to work with. I mean, I think it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to, to work here. And the last two years obviously have been very hard for all of us, but I couldn't be prouder to work for all of you. I was speaking at a city clerk's event yesterday and I was able to tell them just how very proud I am to work for this elected board of supervisors. Not everyone on the panel was able to say that they were always unilaterally proud of the elected officials with whom they got to work with, but I I'm convinced that between this board and this staff here, the 13,000 employees you mentioned, we have accomplished things in the last two years that no other organization could have navigated. So I just want to thank you for your support. And well, Mr. Chairman, just yes. quickly just to point this out, because I think this is something that should be recognized. Uh, Joy, I believe, first woman to serve in this chair, yes, and the entire leadership is, is women and uh, just have done a remarkable job. Just, just want to point that out. It's great. It's a big, those are big glass breaking things. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So with that, then we'd like to do a little pin presentation and maybe a picture down here. If my colleagues will join me. Okay, next uh, we're going to move to the pet showcase. Just moving right along here. Um, and do we have John with us? Yes, good morning. Good morning, John. Can you please introduce us to the star of today's pet showcase? I would be happy to. Um, Today, I'd like to introduce you to Cole. Cole's A number, his animal ID number is A4692739. Cole's a very good boy, and at just under a year and a half old, he still has a lot of that puppy playfulness in him. Cole loves to go for walks with our staff and our volunteers, and he just loves to meet new people. Cole's a little nervous around other dogs that he doesn't know, so if you have other pets in your house, we do recommend that you do a nice slow introduction or even ask for some professional dog training to help Cole make a transition to his new home and family. Cole's already neutered, he has all of his vaccinations and he comes with his license, all for only a $25 adoption fee. Cole would love to meet you today. He's at our Mesa shelter. All right, well, John, thanks so much. Thanks for introducing us to Cole. And as always, thanks for all that you guys do over at Animal Care and Control. Thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk, do we have any announcements or corrections to the agenda today? 
Chairman, I have none. Okay, thank you. Next, we will move to planning and zoning hearings, consent agenda, five, freedom boat and RV storage, six, Chapel family project, seven, Arlington Valley solar energy, eight, 55th and baseline. Do we have any uh, registered speakers or comments on any of these items? Chairman, supervisors, none were received for these items. Okay, uh, the board will now consider items five through eight. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the planning and zoning consent agenda, uh, consent agenda items five through eight in accordance with the commission recommendations as printed on the agenda. Thank you uh, for the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Under planning and zoning hearings, regular agenda nine through 10, White Tank Foothills phase three. And this item is continued from the March 9th, 2022 agenda. Do we have, uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any registered speakers or comments on items nine and 10? Chairman, supervisors, we did receive uh, speaker forms from Frank Skidglioni, Nancy Rosenberg, Jim Inger, Dean Schwab, all in opposition, but I don't believe that they are here to speak. And we also received, for the record, 78 comments in opposition and two in favor. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. So this item is in District 4. Yeah, Mr. Uh, so I'll turn to uh, the Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It is in District 4, and, and uh, my staff, of course, has been working with the applicant and, and the residents of, of this area. So I wanted to be very, very specific um, in my comments uh, real quick and then ask for a motion. So I appreciate that the applicant has modified his request and is seeking to alleviate local community opposition. The project modifications have lowered the proposed density restricted building heights and redesigned traffic circulation. I believe this case should be remanded back to the commission to discuss the project modifications and to provide the board with an updated recommendation. I hope the applicant and the neighbors use this time at the PNZ commission to work out a compromise. Um, there has been a lot of work that has gone. I, appre I appreciate uh, PNZ. I appreciate uh, the community um, getting in touch with us, and I definitely appreciate the applicant being cognizant uh, of these requests, and basically they want to modify their plan. So that should be done at the PNZ level at this point with all the changes. Uh, therefore, I move that items 9 and 10, um, DMP 2021001 and Z2021050, White Tank Foothills Phase 3 be remanded to PNC. All right. Thank you for the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo, for the second. Uh, and Vice Chairman, I know you put a lot at you and Scott and the whole team put a lot of work into this. So thank you um, for it seems like a great... Uh, Great uh, approach at this point, and uh, so I will be supportive of the motion. Uh, any further discussion? All right, motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next under statutory hearings, clerk of the board 11 through 12, petitions hearing for the formation of the proposed Tonka Vista Irrigation Water Delivery District and Terrace View Trail Irrigation Water Delivery District. 13 through 14, public service franchises for Adaman Irrigation Water Delivery District number 36 and Adaman Mutual Water Company. Madam Clerk, do we have any registered speakers or comments that we've received on items 11 through 14? Chairman, Supervisors, we did receive one request form from Tom Davis in favor, and he is available, I'm sorry, and this is on item number 12. He is available to speak only if necessary. All right. So uh, at this time, the board will consider items 11 through 14. Mr. Chairman, I move a, approval of items 11 through 14. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo and Supervisor Galvin. We have motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. 
Uh, next, on, under statutory hearings, we have Clerk of the Board continued 15, which is SRP petition for establishment of underground conversion service area, Exeter Boulevard 64th Street through 66th Street, Conversion District. Madam Clerk, do we have any registered speakers or uh, comments received on item 15? Chairman, I did not receive any speakers on this item, but we did receive a statement in opposition from Dave Sonovic, and that was shared with all the board offices. We also received a comment in opposition from Patricia Coughlin. She is, although not a resident, within the proposed conversion district, just for the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. Do we have, a, we don't have a comment sheet, or we do? We do have a comment. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. Hopefully I'm not nervous and I won't take up too much of your time. Uh, I'm Dave Sinovic. I live at 6401 East Exeter, which is the southeast corner of 64th and Exeter. Uh, the proposed uh, conversion district is for a power line that runs uh, west to east, 64th to 66th Street on Exeter. Um, I feel I should not have been included in this, this conversion district because I get my power 150 feet south from 64th Street. So what SRP has told me is that they are going to dig up 64th Street, put the line underground, take down part of my block wall, uh, take down uh, mature landscaping than to put a line underground. To me, it doesn't give me a benefit. I don't oppose that conversion district. I just feel I should never have been included in it. So um, I think that's all I have to say. If you have a question, I'll be happy to answer it. Thank you for your comments. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a couple yes. of questions of Mr. Sinovic, but I was curious if there's going to be any presentation from staff or from SRP regarding the nature of this project and what's proposed, and just an overview. Do we have anyone prepared to present that today? I thought SRP might be here today. I have, I'm sorry, one last uh, yeah. comment. The expense to me is $37,000 just to dig up the street, put a power line, which to me it's not really a benefit. I mean, as far as everyone else on that street, you know, that's fine, I guess, so. Thank you, appreciate, appreciate your comment. Um, so we have a, 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 from SRP, um, would you care to come up and, and comment? Sorry to put you on the spot here. <laughs> Sure, my name's Virginia O'Malley and I'm an in-house attorney for SRP. Um, I'm here with um, Mark Cordova and Brady Dresseldorfer um, and they and some other representatives. Um, they um, know the technical details of this. Here, the way that I understand, I, you know, we filed our petition because there's a statutory scheme in Title 40 when residents, you know, I think the statutes were passed in 1968. SRP is completely neutral and agnostic on this process. We happen to be the public utility, public agency that serves this neighborhood. So we are following the, the statutory duties that we have. I mean, these are our customers, but we are, it isn't SRP's proposal. We are supporting um, the neighbors who got together to create a proposed underground service conversion area. And as far as the details of where, like, where the wires go and all of that, one of these guys can speak to that. But if you have any sort of overview or broad questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Ms. O'Malley, thank you. Um, when was SRP first approach for this conversion? I believe it was last, um, summer or fall, there was an initial petition that was filed that had some um, issues with it that needed to be, you know, so it had to be resubmitted. So I believe the first petition was filed on October 26th or thereabouts 2021. So that's the initial petition asking SRP to create the joint report and cost summary estimate. What, what was the impetus for this petition? What was the motivation for this? Um, the neighbors, in that neighborhood 
as as the statute allows, um, created the petition. I you know you'd have to ask them why I think they want to have the wires underground. And does SRP frequently do underground conversion service areas within a residential neighborhood? Not frequently, no. It's only, you know, this statute is, you know, the, the vehicle by which either, you know, APS, Tucson Electric Power, or SRP would have to do this. SRP is an overground, you know, right. power provider. Um, but, you know, the legislature has put this mechanism in place. Okay. So one of my concerns is the impact on the wider neighborhood. You know, you might have a discrete group of people who want this, but I do worry about what I would consider to either be disparate impacts or unintended consequences. So what is SRP's experiences on doing these underground conversion areas in residential neighborhoods? I kind of want to kind of get like a, an illustrative example of what SRP has seen arising as a result of, let's say, these things get built. Because once you do it, you really can't undo it, right? And it's changed the neighborhood and the, and the complexion of the neighborhood. Uh, forever after that. That's correct. I think the last time that SRP did one of these, and I, you know, I might be off in the year, there have been proposed underground conversion districts that were, you know, somehow stopped between the first and second petition. You know, after the neighbors saw the cost, maybe they didn't want to go forward. Um, but <clears throat> I think the last one was in 2003, 2006, and um, and. In that instance, I believe that there were the city, I don't remember if it was Phoenix or the town of Paradise Valley. I started with SRP in 2021, but I've learned about this since then. Um, there may have been funds. Sometimes there are, you know, beautification funds or something that a city will um, throw in to help the neighbors fund it. Okay, so this hasn't happened in SRP territory in a long time. In a long time. I don't know okay. the exact year, but it's been quite a while. And is it also correct that in this, Arcadia, what I call Arcadia proper, the service territories are split between APS and SRP? Um, yes, they are. This, in Arcadia, they are. This particular section is SRP. There's quite a few SRP customers within Arcadia. Right. But there is a portion of Arcadia that's in APS, I believe. Okay, so not all of Arcadia properties. I don't, it, you know what? I'm not absolutely okay. positive. I, I, think, that. I think that's the case. Okay. So how many houses or parcels are affected by this? In this particular instance, there are uh, 15 parcels affected. Okay. And how many signed? Affected in that they are part of the underground Right, yeah, and how area. many signed the petition? Um, of those, I think we're at, it's, it's around somewhere in the 70%. Okay, so that's roughly 10 or 12? The second petition. The first petition was signed by 14 of the 15 homes. I think the second one is either 12 or 13 okay. of the 15 homes, but, but it's over the 60%. But today is about the second petition. Today it's about okay. the second petition. So there are several homeowners or houses that haven't signed the petition that would be subject to paying, let's say, between 30 to 40, $50,000 if this gets approved. There are a few homeowners, yes, and um, because that's the way the statute works. If you have 60%, right. you know, it's kind of a go, no go right. if, for if, SRP to submit its petition. Right. If the board approves it. If the board approves, okay. yes. But for our purposes, we were, our, you know, direction by statute right. is to submit. And then uh, has SRP engaged with its customers in the surrounding area of, uh, of Arcadia proper who maybe have concerns or questions or want to do this as well? We have engaged with um, certainly this proposed district and some people in the surrounding area. And then there's a big movement afoot in Arcadia proper. There's some, like an Arcadia newspaper publication that is um, soliciting signatures for a very big conversion district that originally was proposed as three thousand homes or 3,400 homes, but it hasn't, they haven't, you know, they're in the, they divided it into two because one is in Scottsdale and part is in Phoenix, but they're contiguous. Uh -huh. I mean, so that's, it's under, it's underway, but we have not received a petition yet. So that second large district of, is created would include this one or be separate? It's separate. Okay. And, you know, I don't know whether it would be con considered, you know, of reasonably compact size or, you know, the statutory requirements. Okay. And then Mr. Sinovich here is opposed to it if 
if the board approves it, he would be subject to it and would have to pay the amount that they said he would have to pay, right? Do you know how much his, he would have to pay? His proportionate share of the cost, no, I, I have that on, you know, it's on my computer, but I, oh, it's actually in my bag. I printed okay. a hard copy, but. I think someone's standing behind you. I, yeah, Brady can jump in here. Uh, Brady Drassendorf, I supervise the Municipal Improvements Group at SRP, and it's my team that's working on this proposal with Ginny um, and the neighborhood. Uh, we do have the price breakdown. It was based on the estimated value to convert all of the facilities um, and not to exceed this value. So we you know, kind of looked at the broad case um, and impacts and restoration and all of the things considered uh, to complete this project. Part of the statute is that they do not pay above what the estimate, estimated value for the project is. but. Then in the end of the project, they pay the actual value based on uh, the division between square footage and number of homes, kind of in a proportionate basis. Uh, but to your point uh, earlier with um, Mrs. O'Malley, uh, it is very disruptive, kind of as we can see outside the you know, uh, street work and things that are going on with trenching and undergrounding the facilities from the existing <laughs> overhead to the underground uh, new facilities. How long would the project take? That is a really good question. Um, it would take several weeks, right? So it's not just a quick in and out one or two days, but um, over a period of time, we would have to come in, build the underground uh, system first, and then we would remove and restore all of the trenching activities and such before we come in and remove the overhead facility. So we would basically have two systems in place before we remove the existing overhead facility. Is, is that logistical, um, I, I don't want to say problematic, but is that a logistical issue or hurdle for SRP to have a, just a small area to have underground and the rest of the area is overhead? No, um, SRP, you know, obviously we work with our customers. Um, we have an existing overhead system. We have. Uh, a very vast underground system as more development comes in and ordinances require facilities to be underground. Most of our new uh, installs are underground. Um, operationally, um, you know, it just fits within the system. It's just a little bit different equipment, different approach, different facilities. Um, but it doesn't really affect our system per se, uh, converting it to underground. It's the same. Uh, delivery system, same service uh, to the homes as far as, you know, the voltage and things that they would be receiving from us. Okay. Service. And can you address Mr. Sinovich's concerns that he's included, doesn't think he should be included in the impact to his property? Correct. So, and we've spoke before. Um, as uh, Mrs. O'Malley stated, we're kind of neutral in this situation and we're just operating based on the request to us to do so. Um, his house is along the Exeter uh, block from 64 to 66. There are some facilities that fall within his property. And so as part of the request to underground that street, um, in the majority case, uh, his property was included. We don't uh, determine exactly who wants to participate or who is elected to participate. But um, as part of the initial review and design, his house was included. And so as part of the statute, we were converting all of the facilities within his parcel, including his service, which comes off of 64th Street, which he uh, stated earlier. So his parcel is included because the petitioners included his parcel. It's not like SRP said, hey, we have to include this in order to effectuate this plan. Correct. And we, we could still convert to, uh, to Mr. Simonick's uh, statement, we could still convert Exeter uh, and exclude his home, although there would be some facilities left within his parcel. So if he was carved, let's say if he was carved out of this new district, you would be able to properly do everything else that's needed for the other customers? Yes, the, the, the existing overhead primary line runs along the north side of Exeter. His house is on the south side of Exeter. He does have some non-electrical conduction. Uh, it's basically reinforcement for the pole on the west side of 64th Street. So it holds that line on the west side. And so it's just basically a, uh, we call it a down guy and a head guy to a stub pole 
that holds the lines on the west side of 64th Street. So they're non-conductive. Um, they're not meant to deliver power, just more of a reinforcement for the existing facilities opposite side of the street from his house. And so as part of the conversion, we were removing those facilities and converting his service as well. But to your point, the entire project could go on and leave those facilities there and merely convert the overhead uh, 12 kV system on the north side. Okay, and then one final question for you before we bring Mr. Sinovich back. Um, Mrs. O'Malley referred to the fact that Arcadia proper is looking at doing a much bigger district with about 3,000 homes. Let's say we look at it from economies of scale. Would it be, might be just better off and more economical for everyone involved if this area is included in that larger district and maybe just done as a total one project? So parts of the statute uh, require SRP to respond to a petition within 120 days. Um, part of that statute says a reasonable compact size. So in order for us to respond in a timely manner, uh, something of 16 homes is, is within reason. Something within the scale of 3,400 homes uh, would be more in line with like a five or 10 year project, right? I mean, this is astronomical as far as, you know, reviewing our existing facilities and uh, circuitry and how we're going to reroute and rebuild that entire infrastructure from a global uh, view, right? So SRP would have more operational concerns about that larger proposed district. Right, and we would not be able to meet the statutory requirement of 120 days to provide estimates and you know design layouts and things like that. So within that statute, there is that 120 day time timer, if you will. Um, and so that really forces our hands to be able to respond quickly. So the scale, although the economies of scale would be a benefit, right? Um, the timing would be absurd, I, th I think, for us to be able to respond within 120 days of something of that magnitude. Interesting. With any reasonable uh, value, right? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to bring Mr. Sinovich back. Okay. That's okay. Mr. Chairman, yes. real quickly. Supervisor sorry. Gallardo. Yeah, yeah, real quickly, just curious. and and. Um, this is all relatively new to me. I never knew this statute even existed. But the more I hear, um, the more I believe this statute needs to be revisited by the legislature, really does. But I'm just curious, if the property owner decides, to heck with you, I'm not paying my, my portion, what happens? Well, if that happens, the statute, um, so- If you could just come a little closer to the microphone, because we've got that. people watching, no problem. Um, and I did also pull the conversion costs, and um, I wanted to what, point out. What does he have to pay? I'm sorry. Oh, his amount that is, uh, you know. His, I think he did say it. We just, his, we just, we just didn't write it down. I his think he proportionate amount is thirty-three thousand seven hundred eighty-six dollars and six cents. Okay, he doesn't pay the thirty-three plus. So what happens is when we filed this, the way the statute works, when we filed this petition to the Board of Supervisors, we were required, shall, file at the same time a notice and record a notice of proposed lien. It was not a lien filed against each property. It's a sort of a blanket notice of proposed lien, which the date of filing. So if somebody chooses either not to pay, everybody has to pay who's within the district. So they either can pay upfront cash, they can work out a payment arrangement. Um, that the Board of Supervisors approves, and a lien is filed against their home for that amount. And so there's, you know, monthly installments they're supposed to pay. If they don't pay those, then, you know, SRP can go through the foreclosing on the lien process. The There is a place in the statute that says that the, it's not in SRP's discretion. There is, you know, power the Board of Supervisors, as part of its order, says power will be cut off to that property, potentially. Um, but there's a lot of shells in the statute. So um, there's a lien, so that's the payment mechanism. Right. Payment enforcement mechanism is a lien, and the lien takes priority over everything except tax liens. And, and Mr. Chairman, just real quickly, just so I know, like I said, this is relatively new. So it, within the statute, there is no opt-out provision allowed for him? Well, the opt-out provision is to not sign the 
petition. Yes, if there are still 60%, though, there is no opt-out. The opt-out, you know, he could, if you determined that you wanted to pull Mr. Sinovic's property out of this, then the neighbors, the 14 remaining homes, start the petition process over again because the, we have to do a new study of costs, reapportion those. We can't just pick and choose and pull and jiggy the numbers. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I appreciate the discussion. I'll turn it right back over to Supervisor Govan. This is his, his area. Mr. Hickman. So, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm done. Yeah. Thank you. Vice Chair Hickman. So, um, boy, the county makes the press every day about some issues, and look at this issue right, right now. Uh, I have a feeling this isn't getting in the paper, but this is what truly our job is to start trying to figure some of this out. And I've never seen an issue like this come up before. So thank, thank you for letting us ask questions. And you say that is the senior supervisor, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the most gray-haired supervisor. The way I'm not saying that. <laughs> the way the statute is set up, um, a power APS goes to the city in oh. which the, it's located, SRP goes to the Board of Supervisors because we're not regulated by the ACC. Aha. Uh -huh. There we I go. Uh, <laughs> but you didn't know that. <laughs> didn't. Um, so I'm going to just ask a question about unintended consequences based on uh, my history of being a farm boy. All right? Um, this might matter not if uh, the answer to the question um, does this area have underground irrigation? Is this is this irrigated lots? It, it is. It's it's within the irrigated. Most most of the uh, originally, you know, was uh, the larger uh, agricultural kind of ranch home development. Um, there's been a lot of redevelopment in in recent time to you know newer style homes and lots and things like that. But yes, there are a significant number of irrigated lots still within this community. So my dad would call would chap our hide on the farm if we took heavy equipment over the irrigation lines that were just, you know, not not too far underground. And especially with mature neighborhoods, you probably have featured old cement tiled um, irrigation lines. So who um, who uh, fixes? the unintended consequence of ruining an irrigation line because the person that might be in this irrigation district um, is not part of this part of this uh, line. So, and sometimes you don't find out you've had a harm, harm to your irrigation system for a growing season, say. So is there some sort of indemnification clause or something that SRP takes care of uh, because it gets awfully pricey. Um, and we were just talking about bringing down a, uh, his, his wall. Um, you pricey homes have usually uh, pricey lawns that have a, might have a problem. So what, what, are, what happens there? There's residential service terms. Yeah, if you can come over to the microphone. I apologize. There's Thanks. There's residential service terms that each um, customer agrees to. SRP does not indemnify for that, no, because that is, you know, we are we are required to provide this power. SRP does its work carefully, but SRP is indemnified by people, but we don't, you know, we're a political subdivision of the state of Arizona. We don't indemnify for this. If we have subcontractors who are doing work on our behalf, there would be a clause in that contract where they had to indemnify us for damage that was done, but that, um, I think it's presumed that when SRP puts these, you know, they have a, a vested interest in protecting their own irrigation lines, and they also, when they put these underground, you know, this is what we do, this is what we are required to do. Okay. So the statute can't also then say, okay, you have to pay all this, SRP, even if it goes over, and then indemnify. Well, I, and thank you. I, I just wanted to make something out on the record that we're trying to think of so many things that, that all of a sudden the, the cat's out of the bag or, the, or somebody actually runs over the cat. It was thought out a little bit before. Um, we have an irrigation district board come in here and say we had a hand on ruining their irrigation. 
yeah. right. And I mean, now I who think, we look for. I think that Brady and Mark and their people are quite careful about this. Well, you guys have labor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some some care to what they're doing on a on a backo, and others don't. That's so. very very true. And and to to Mr. Sinovic's uh, point, you know, he does have mature landscaping. Most of this area, obviously. Is, has been around for a significant period of time. And so there is, uh, you know, mature landscaping mm -hmm. um, that we have to work around, uh, as well as there are a lot of um, encumbrances along the route with uh, new walls and, you yeah. know, decorative landscaping and all of those things. And so that is part of some of the cost involved is working in and around and replacing and restoring some of that okay. uh, equipment. Um, do we need, there, there's also the requirement for the easement. Do we need to discuss that at all? I mean, is yeah, that as part of the overhead conversion to the underground? Uh, we require a new easement for our facilities within that area as well. So you're talking about the easement that's on each person's property, right? Yes. There's an easement that has to be provided. I think it's around 40-348 or 349 around there uh, talks about um, uh, each property owner then, you know, so we've got the public lines and then the line from public to point of distribution on the personal property. That requires each of those landowners to provide an easement to SRP for SRP to have its facilities underground mm -hmm. on those properties. And there are enforcement mechanisms in the statute also around that number of statute that I was talking about that re require the landowner to provide the easement, if they don't provide the easement, um, they, uh, you know, that's one where their power shall be cut off. So they have to provide that easement. The statute has, you know, it kind of, the statute kind of winds and winds and winds, but that's what it says. Okay. Thank you. Supervisor couple, Galvin. I have a couple of questions for Ms. O'Malley and your colleague. Um, what is the total cost of this project estimated? Uh, it's, it's just over $500,000. Okay. And, you know, to me, what I consider to be essential services, right, for the maintaining of, of a human being to, to live is water and electricity, especially since we live here in the summer. Um, and SRP does both. Do you consider this underground to be part of an essential service? Is this a must-have? The, the existing overhead electric service provides power to each home currently right. okay. um, in its current condition. Perfect. Thank you. So, so just to that point, there is no health or safety reason in which to have to do this, right? I mean, I think we know the answer, but I'm just throwing it out there. Correct. It's for aesthetics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, at all? Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming down. I Thanks for coming in uh, sort of last second there and answering a lot of questions. So very grateful for that. Uh, yes. Sure. <clears throat> thanks for coming up again. Yes. Uh, first of all, do you have anything in response to what you just heard? Um, well, when it comes to the irrigation, it, the pipeline runs down 64th Street. So if you're going to dig a trench under 64th Street and then go through the block wall, that's where the big pipe is. So that has to be avoided, okay? Um, as far as anything else, uh, I, would, I would have to say is that um, I was never given a petition. No one ever gave me one to sign, the two ones that went around. Maybe they figured I was the old guy, Clint Eastwood, and I wasn't going to sign it anyway. I don't know. But um, I just don't think I should be included. I understand the stature, and if 60% of the people you know, approve it, then, then the conversion district by state law go, goes into effect. So um, I, don't know what, I don't know what else to say. Um, I did submit the form to the clerk here, just a couple of paragraphs, so I could be here today. If you have any questions, you know. You have not had any discussion, no negotiations, no meetings with the folks, with the petitioners? Um, directly across the street from me, uh, my neighbor passed away, and a gentleman bought the lot, 
and is building a large home. Uh, I don't know if it's 10,000, 12,000 square feet. I know his guest house is bigger than my first house. But uh, he introduced himself, I guess, maybe five weeks ago and just said that, um, you know, I'm sorry you didn't get the petition. That was an oversight. Uh, you know, the neighbors, it, it would be, I don't remember his exact terminology, but it'd be unneighborly if I came in and protested here uh, to the Board of Supervisors. That's my only conversation with him. You know, again, the street has changed. There's been people have passed away. They've, they've moved on and they've built, you know, large homes. You know, I've been there for 40 years. So to me, SRP is an overhead utility company. I understand the stature, but um, again, I just like to be excluded. As far as I'm doing it, that's, that's fine, but I don't get a benefit. You know, his explanation to me was, it'll improve your property value by 2%. I'm sorry, you know, I'm not moving. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple more questions. Yeah, sure. Mr. Sinovich. Um, yeah, that's another question I had about property values. Is there a concern among yourself or folks that you know that there would be a disparity in property values among homes that have this and then other homes that don't? Um, I would say that in the two block area, 64th to 66th, Most, of, I, don't, I don't want to use the term most, a significant amount, if there's 15 houses or 17 houses, I would say that at least a dozen of them have been there for over five or six years, and they've never complained about the overhead utility line before. Okay. I, Again, I know it's difficult. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just have one question, then I have a comment. Um, so what is the address of the house across the street where you said you had this discussion? Well, if I'm 6401, I believe it's 6402. Exeter? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, thank and, you. Um, well, I lost my train of thought being a little nervous, but... Uh, You're doing great. You're doing great, yeah. If there's anything else you want to add, otherwise I have yeah. no more questions. Not really. I mean, aesthetically, sure, it's an improvement, I guess, but the people who have built these new homes they haven't objected to the utility. The person who's objected is the one who's building the new house. So if they excluded you and they wanted to move forward themselves, you'd be okay with that? Sure. Okay, thank okay. you. And, and I know you have a difficult uh, decision because here's a stature that says if 60% of the people do it, then that's the state law. Um, I would have thought that uh, if I had been approached initially I would have said the same thing. Look, I get my power 150 feet south. Exclude me. Go ahead and have your petition. So anyway, thanks for your time. Thank you so much for coming down. Appreciate it. Uh, when would you be ruling on this type of thing? Or we're gonna well, yeah, we're going to proceed from here. So again, th thanks so much. All right. So any other? Oh, yes. Madam Clerk. Chairman Supervisors, I was just informed that we have three people on the webinar that wish to speak in favor. We have Jason Morris, Alex Hayes, and Joshua Simon. Okay, uh, all right, so um, again, this is in your district. Um, Supervisor Galvin, would you like to hear from them? Absolutely, yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, just, if you wanna go ahead, doesn't matter to me what order we do it in. Jason Morris. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and Supervisors. This is actually Alex Hayes on behalf of Jason Morris, um, representing um, some of the uh, a neighbor in this area that is actually the petitioner um, for this service area. And, and Mr. Simon, who is the petitioner, is actually available as well. And I think I'll let him speak to some of the particulars about the process and some of the conversations that I've had and, and the specifics about this neighborhood. But I just wanted to note that, you know, the, the statute does exists for a reason and it's been followed so far. The um, neighbors in this area, they want to underground um, utilities. 
and I think it uh, will be a benefit to the neighborhood, and they uh, have followed that process. The statute requires a 60% threshold. They've exceeded that, um, I believe, 75% or almost 75% of the residents in this area signed that petition, um, and uh, two additional neighbors have no objection to this um, moving forward. So. Um, you know, that threshold exists for a reason, just as you wouldn't want one person forcing this upon um, all the other neighbors. I don't think, I think the intent is to not, uh, you know, allow one person in the neighbor to um, prevent the, the wishes of the uh, other residents. So I appreciate Mr. Sinovich's comments and understand his concerns. Um, but I, I think I'd like to let Mr. Simon talk about the process uh, and the communication um, throughout. Thank you. Any questions? All right, our next speaker, please. Do we have anyone else on the line who'd like to speak? Hello, Hello this is Josh Simon, can you hear me? Yes, thank you for joining us, please go ahead. Thank you, uh, Board of Supervisors, I appreciate your time. Um, I think I need to clarify a few things for the record. Um, SRP um, stipulated that we could exclude this property, Mr. Sinovic's property, and that is false. Um, SRP actually created the properties that had to be in the conversion district. So basically, it's the properties that front the street where you're undergrounding. And so if you look at a map between 64th and 66, every house but one on the very um, southeast corner was included. We did not pick the homes. It's based on, the statute says, it's based on the houses that front the street. So I just want that to be clear. You can't just carve Dave's uh, property out of it. Um, so just want to make sure we're clear, uh, clear about that. As far as having underground service, as you guys know, it's getting to the monsoon season. Uh, wind, uh, storms, knock power lines down. They become uh, safety hazards. I think, uh, if anything, any new construction projects in the county, in any city across the valley, requires underground power going forward. I think this is a very valuable thing for our community. And as you've seen, everyone wants to do this. Um, instead, um, if you don't approve this, we have about five uh, homes under construction or starting construction on this block of 15, 16 homes. So. Everybody under construction and all the existing neighbors but one want this done. So what you're going to have happen for SRP is we're going to each piecemeal this ourselves, and you're going to have power lines going down and up, down and up, and you're going to have endless construction projects on this street. Um, I believe the state statute says we gave you the petition. You know, um, to Mr. Sinovic's um, comments, my pregnant wife came to your house. She dropped off a letter. Yes, we did talk, and I think you told me that you had more artwork in your home than the value of the entire <laughs> conversion district, um, as well as your homes in Telluride and Hawaii and all those things. I was definitely listening. And look, we just, we want to be uh, very neighborly. Um, I would also say there's already easements in place, I believe, on the north side. In his comment, or maybe it was SRP, about the mature landscaping, um, the conversion district and SRP can confirm the line is going to run underground on the north side of the street. So his property shouldn't be affected at all. Um, so we're actually putting the line on the north side of the street. He's on the south side of the street. Um, <clears throat> I also want to confirm that everyone on the north side, every single neighbor on the north side has signed that petition. So we're OK with our front yards being torn up because we see the value of it. Lastly, and I know, I think everyone knows this, the neighbors are paying for it. We're paying for it. It doesn't cost the county anything. It doesn't cost SRP anything. It doesn't cost any of the other neighbors outside of the conversion district. If you're voting for a ballot election, a recall, 50, 60% is easy. We're at 70%. And I could have gotten two more signatures, but due to the you know, timing for SRP and the 120 days and how long this process takes, I submitted it once we hit 70% because that was the, we were already over the minimum threshold. As you've seen, there's only one person out of 15 that is against it. Um, and then lastly, I would just say, um, 
you know, this is <clears throat> a this increases property values. The thirty-seven thousand dollars that Mr. Sinovic might have to pay is a is chunk change in my uh, view in the increase in value of his property, which is probably over two million dollars today. And this having underground power lines instead of power lines in your front yard. Do we lose him? Are you still there? I, I think we'll oh. increase his property value by by a point and a half. Oh. You there? Yeah, we're here. Can, can you connection. hear us? Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry. Hello. My internet. Okay, I, I think we got the. I think yep. we got. Sorry the, about that. Okay, are you wrapped up? Okay. Yeah. We, any questions I can answer? Yeah. Any questions from the board? Yeah, um, Mr. Okay. Chairman, I think now there's a discrepancy between what SRP says and what Mr. Simon says. So I'd like to see if SRP can please respond to what Mr. Simon had to say. So I think to your uh, point earlier, uh, Mr. Galvin, the, the question was, could the undergrounding on the north side of Exeter be completed by excluding uh, Mr. Uh, Sinovic's property? And the answer was yes. Um, the determination of who um, was involved in the, con in, in the conversion service area initially, um, Vince, we have, Vince so, is the, the desire. I'm Vince yeah, Vince, if you can come up and state your name just so we can, Vince people Vestro, online. Project can. lead for the municipal group. The statute says that once the conversion district is complete, there cannot be any overhead facilities there would be overhead facilities left in his front yard. That, I think, is why he is included. There would be a pole, a down guy in his front yard. But who made the decision to include his property? Well, the Simons were the leaders, and they submit the, the map. Okay, because they're saying that they were told by SRP to include his property, no. that it was necessary to do that. No. Ultimately, it's their responsibility. The, the, I believe the statute says something about, oh, what is it? Benefits. benefits, yeah, the benefits. And, and nothing can be left in the district after it's done, that's overhead. So it was an SRP that ultimately makes the map. In conversations, we talked about stuff, but it's up to them to provide the map. The initial map had a lot more people, and that was changed. It's been adjusted downward? Yes. Okay. Mr. Simon, would you be able to move forward without Mr. Sinovich's property? I'm not sure he's uh, on the line anymore. Do we know, uh, Madam Clerk, if he's on the line? Chairman, I'm checking. Okay, great. Did we have, thank you, unless you had another question, uh, did we have one other speaker on the line? Were there three or just two? Just the two. Okay. All right, well, as, as we wait on that, again, this is your district. Uh, Supervisor Galvin, how would you like to proceed? Oh, do you have further comments? I was just gonna point, to, I want to point to a statute um, <clears throat> 40, Dash 346B, the last sentence of it. You can take a look at it, but it does say, it does allow the Board of Supervisors to take a look at benefit. But what does happen if is if a home, if you determine that a home is not in establishing the underground conversion service area, the Corporation Commission of Wealth, so it's the Board of Supervisors in this instance, shall eliminate any territory described in the petition which it finds will not be benefited by the establishment of the underground conversion service area or in which it finds that the conversion is not economically or technically feasible. And then in that instance, there's a later provision that says if you've put a property in that wasn't or taken out, then the petition pro process starts again. And what I understood, I think uh, Vince was correct. I, what I understood by the time I came into this was that um, because Mr. Sinovic has some overground wires, if you're gonna 
once you underground, you have to underground everything because all these people are paying for everything to be underground. So it's guy wires and stuff, but um, that's the reason that he's in there, I believe. But if we wanted to, we could take him out. You guys can take him, you know, and that would be, I guess, for like Wayne Peck or your attorney to tell you, you could take him out, yeah, I think we're but then over. you have to start again. So, yeah, I, I, and I think again. that's a fair point. We may have just, in, not that you don't know this, but we may have uh, a situation where, where we may need to talk to our attorney in executive session and get some legal right. advice as well. But thank you for identifying that. I just want to hear Mr. Simon's thoughts on that before we. Yeah, sorry about that. I wasn't able to talk. Um, to comment on SRP, that is not accurate. I'm looking at an email from February 12th um, from Jennifer Huntgate at SRP that they created. They gave us the list to um, the, uh, the last comment about which properties we had to get um, to sign off. Um, yes, originally we had more. We actually had the, this area of Arcadia has several double lots where there's a rear lot and it cuts through the front lot for access. And we had even more lots because they were all willing to sign on to this too. And so I think we were told those are, don't count because you have to front the street that it benefits. And SRP gave us the map of who has to benefit based on from west to east who wanted to underground those power lines. And yes, Dave's property is across the street from my property and he benefits from it. Okay, but Mr. Simon, you would be okay if Mr. Sinovich was removed from this district? I have I have issues with that. We've been working on this for over a year. SRP, like it's taken it's taken over um, over a year to get to this point, and then to start all over again. Just I mean, it doesn't seem very fair to the rest of the neighbors. And then we're all under construction here, and so now everyone's going to have to rip up their landscaping when we were all planning on having this done by the summer or fall. That's going to take an extra eight to ten months now. So you went you. You went into construction with the assumption this would be approved? Well, we, I mean, if the, I think that 70% of the neighbors wanted something, I guess from yours, from the board standpoint, if, if, if over 70 people want, 70% um, of the neighbors want it, I mean, one, one neighbor is going to set everyone else back. I'm just trying to find a way to help you move forward and to address Mr. Sinovich's concerns. I offered it even pay for half of Mr. Sinovich's line and donate to charity because he said, you know, he would rather give the money to charity. And so I actually sent him a text that he never responded to offering to give him 15 grand towards a charity of his choosing to be made in his name to be a good neighbor. But he didn't even respond to that. So I, I don't know. I mean, maybe he'll take me back up on his offer today because he wanted he'd rather give that money to charity. OK, Mr. Chairman, I think there is um, several bones of contention here between Mr. Simon, the petitioner and SRP in addition to Mr. Sinovich's concerns about his property being included in something over his objections. I'm a big proponent of personal property rights. Uh, I would hate for the government to impose on something over their objections on their property, even though the statute says that the threshold is 60%. In fact, I do find that threshold to be very low, but the statute is what it is. Um, I would prefer to see a consensus in the community. I'm afraid about uh, what precedents could be set, especially in Arcadia proper. However, I do understand Mr. Simon's concerns and his motivation and the fact that about 70% of the folks have signed the petition. I don't want to stand in the way of that. However, it does seem today that the folks that spoke here are not on the same page. I would urge uh, Mr. Simon and, and SRP to work together. I would encourage Mr. Sinovich to work in good faith with Mr. Simon. I think it might be a good idea. You know, I was casting about different ideas of when we could maybe come back here and discuss it. But I also think we need to talk to legal about whether or not we can exclude Mr. Sinovich, because I don't think Mr. Simon would have concerns about that. But I don't want Mr. Simon's projects or that of his neighbors to be delayed either. OK, so Mr. Chairman, I would love to make a motion to continue to our next board meeting. And I strongly encourage everyone who spoke this morning to work together and hopefully come back with a resolution for us. And also, we need to talk to legal, because I do have some uh, concerns from a legal perspective. All right, uh, we do have a motion to continue to our next uh, uh, board meeting. And Madam Clerk, what would the date be on that? That would be June 22nd. June 22nd, thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. 
All right. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Hickman. I agree. Um, obviously, we've got some issues here that need to be worked out. And I just want to thank everyone for their involvement, both in, in being in person and online. I think this is a great example of that. We can do this as a board, uh, as a county, uh, to allow people to participate in, from where they are at and where they want to be at on that particular date. So with that, unless we have any other discussion, we do have a motion to continue to the uh, June 22nd meeting. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, that motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, now, at this time, I would like to move, jump back in the agenda to item number six. Uh, this was the Chapel Family uh, Project. I th I've uh, learned that we did have uh, someone who wanted to speak. I think we had a representative from the city of Gil from the town of Gilbert. Sorry, uh, town of Gilbert that wanted to weigh in uh, on this item. So, Vice Chair Hickman, yeah, did Mr. You Chairman, because I made the original motion uh, for items five through eight, I'd like to—I um, don't know if the word is resend or, or reconsider. Motion um, to reconsider. Motion to reconsider item number six. Thank you mm -hmm. uh, very much for that. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Mr. Mr. Yes. Chairman, before we move forward, I mean, um, it's not often that we do this. Um, I'm just curious: Did the speaker submit a, a form to speak? We're sending a bad president. I mean, anyone can come and say, hey, I wanted to speak on this item. I'm sorry I missed yep. it. Can you reconsider it? Or So, Madam Clerk, uh, if you want to address that, because I would agree uh -huh. what, what I had heard was that they were there and that we didn't, we just, we didn't see it. So it was, I, I agree with you. We should not yeah. create that precedent. So I think this is important. Chairman Supervisor Gallardo, the clerk of the board's office did not receive a speaker form from the town of Gilbert in advance. Um, I have the speaker forms that were handed to me this morning and a list of speakers that had registered ahead of time. <clears throat> and no one is listed for item number six for request to speak. Okay. Well, uh, then I think we're... Yeah, I think... Me? Yeah, Thank excuse you. me. Mr. Chairman, do you want to do a slight re uh, yeah, small recess? We're just going to do a brief recess. Okay. Thank you. Clarity on this issue. 
So, so my understanding and the ruling of the chair uh, on this item is that the town of Gilbert registered for the webinar. They believe that by registering for the webinar, that allowed them to register as a speaker. Um, so basically, I think we have a bit of a misunderstanding in what is still a fairly new technology. Um, so based upon that, uh, I believe that there was a, a confusion there. I do not believe that by allowing a motion, to, by ruling a motion of reconsideration to be in order, that that does not create, and in fact, I'm explicitly saying as chair, that in the future, we do not intend to allow folks to come in and reopen, have motion reconsideration because for whatever reason, they did not speak on that item. But here, there was a misunderstanding. They thought that they were registering as a speaker when in fact, they were just registering for the webinar. So and encourage people who participate remotely. We, we want them to continue to do that, but if they want to speak, they need to separately register as a speaker in addition to just registering for the webinar. Um, so we do have a motion. Any further discussion on, I mean, just to be clear, the board has the, um, the, board has the authority to overrule the, the uh, ruling of the chair on that. So I just want to be very, very transparent on that. But I think that's what happened here. And that's why I think that, that motion is in order. Okay. Do we have a second? Okay, we have the second to overrule the chair. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I didn't hear that motion to overrule the chair. But if there is one, uh, this is the time to make it. So uh, we have a motion in a second. Any discussion on the motion uh, for reconsideration? And, and Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate your 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 thoughts on it. I just think we've been doing webinars for the last two years because of the pandemic. It's not necessarily new, but in my opinion. But nonetheless, I, I, did, I don't think I can support the motion. But nonetheless, it is what it is. Okay, all right, we have uh, any further discussion on the motion for reconsideration? Okay, all right, uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion for reconsideration, say aye. 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 All opposed? No. All right, that uh, motion passes three to one. So now item number six is reopened. So at this time, Madam Clerk, do we have uh, any speakers on item six? Chairman Supervisors, I understand we have Kyle, I'm sorry, Kyle, if I miss up the last name, Mirrors, from the town of Gilbert. Kyle, are you on? Yes, I am. Can you Thank hear you. Me? Yes. Yes, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, and Supervisors. I apologize if there was any confusion. When we did sign up, I was pretty sure we pushed the button that said we were opposed and wished to speak. So. Um, again, I don't know where the confusion was, but I appreciate um, the opportunity to address the board this morning. Um, town staff is opposed to the rezoning uh, request on item number six. Um, before I get into the reasons why, I would like to thank your county staff. Uh, they are excellent in providing us information, um, keeping us in the loop, and taking all of our comments into account. It's, it's very much appreciated. Uh, as for the rezoning request, um, given the location of the site and the town's um, general plan, a more intensive land use is appropriate for the site uh, than what currently exists today. Uh, however, since the site will need town utilities to develop commercially, uh, it's our position that the annexation and rezoning to a town, to a town classification would be uh, more appropriate. Um, to further this thought, um, since billboards are not allowed at all within the town of Gilbert, uh, the town is very concerned about the potential for billboards being constructed on this site if rezoned to a county commercial designation. Obviously, the uh, billboards would not need the utilities that would be needed for the commercial development, uh, so that could occur without any type of annexation into the town. The staff report does indicate that the property will be annexed in the future for commercial development, uh, and our concern is that if a billboard is constructed on the site, that a small parcel will be left as a county island in order to preserve the billboard as, a remain, as the remainder of the property then is requested to be annexed and rezoned to be developed into the town. Uh, this has occurred in other parts of Gilbert. Um, the 202 in Higley is a great example, uh, leaving billboards on small county island parcels while the surrounding parcels are annexed and developed within the town. Uh, we would respectfully, respectfully request that this application be denied and when development of the site is ready to move forward, that annexation or rezoning into the town would occur. Um, having made that request, 
If the Board of Supervisors does move to approve the rezoning request, the town would respectfully ask that billboards not be allowed uh, on the site, that the, that allowable use would be struck from the, from the allowed uses. Uh, I appreciate the time. Again, thank you for um, giving us the opportunity. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for your testimony. Any questions from my colleagues? No, but I, <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I was, yeah, as you could see, uh, with, with this being off consent, we made the motion and went through. Then now late notice, uh, Gilbert, steps up and and wants their citizen the way I see it their citizens to be heard a little bit because it's a government entity and I'm sorry but district one is not here to ask or or let this is his district and I was always already a little bit uh, troubled the moment we came back to this issue because there's no one from district one to ask so um, I'm going to because we've amended the motion and have heard uh, some speaking uh, on this. Obviously, that means it's off the consent agenda. And um, I would make, at this point, uh, I would make a motion to continue this item. Um, I don't know if there's a date certain. Uh, um, so I would just make the motion to continue to the next uh, scheduled uh, meeting so we can make sure we hear uh, Jack's viewpoint while, he, while he's here. It's, again, this is in his district, and uh, this needs to go through through him. All right. Thank you for the uh, motion to continue at this point to a uh, uncertain date. Well, I think that's where we're at. We did the next board meeting the is next June twenty second. <clears throat> June twenty second. Yes. Yeah, I we think can. That gives enough time. Yeah, we can. We can always, if that needs to be adjusted. Yeah. Okay. We can do. Okay. Motion to continue to June twenty second. Do we have a second? All right, thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Motion and a second. Any uh, discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, motion passes unanimously. Um, thank you uh, to, to everyone uh, for your understanding and patience on this. And we're going to get back on track here with the agenda. Next is uh, statutory hearings, transportation, 16 through 18, patent easement abandonment as listed uh, on the agenda. Madam Clerk, do we have any registered speakers or comments on items 16 through 18? Chairman and Supervisors, I did receive two speaker forms on item number 16 in opposition. We have John Dixon who would like to speak and Lucy Mitchell. All right, we can, uh, uh, who, whoever wants to start first. Come on down. Please state your name for the record. John Dixon. Uh, Mr. Dixon. Uh, adjacent property uh, to the east of this property. Um, did anybody get my letter that I sent in? I mean, I got to notice it, but I never got it. I don't even know if anybody got it here at the county. <clears throat> yeah, I think, Madam Clerk, yeah. we, I think that was shared with the offices. Is that right? One of my, one of my biggest questions Correct. is... is Yep. Okay. It was sent to the clerk of the board mailbox. It okay. was shared with the right. board of okay, supervisors. Yep. Thank you. Um, one of my biggest questions is, is why why are we changing the the patent the the easement issues? I mean, there's, there was no explanation on that. Uh, do we hit, do we have anyone here from county staff who can address the question? Jennifer Toth from McDot, thank you for being here. We're pulling up people left and right out of the audience today. Good morning. Um, Good morning. In terms of why abandon a, a, a patent easement abandonment, a, an applicant comes in and asks for it to be abandoned. And so we're following the application process that's outlined in the statute. Thank you. So, so I guess the answer is, is no, we don't know the, what the reason is. I'm going to assume that because this property does not meet uh, the, the, uh, the RU43 requirements as far as frontage, that he's going north because all the diagonal across the top, and that was the only way the guy could get one acre out of that piece of property, that uh, he's going to do a cut and fill and wants to go all the way up to the easement. 
My biggest concern is the flood control issue. All of that property there is really a swell, a water runoff off the hill. <clears throat> and if they go up and do a cut and fill, they either have to export it or they're gonna do a, a fill. And if they do that, they'll probably be changing the flood control issue. Um, I don't really care if it washes out the road again, but I don't want that water coming onto my property because I only have, a, uh, in 100 feet, I only have about eight to 10 inches of fall from back to front. And I don't think I can take handle of the rest of that coming off the hill. That's my biggest, biggest issue there. Um, you know, I don't know uh, how the county looks at that kind of stuff, if they even consider it, why the county even uh, allowed that property to be sold because it didn't meet the R43 requirements, uh, but it did. Um, I noted that all to the uh, realtor and told them all the issues that were wrong on that piece of property, but they were all ignored because they're out after, you know, the selling the property. I offered to buy it for 5,000 bucks, but he turned it down, tried to sell it for 40,000. But that's irrelevant here. My biggest concern is the water coming off that hill and shedding down to my pro piece of property and probably even to the, the property that's west of me. That's another, that's another big issue there. Um, I don't have a lot of confidence in how the county goes out there and looks at it. I don't think they have looked at it. Uh, there was never a petition. There was never any kind of a notice that the property didn't meet the R43 requirements as far as the frontage. It's only 120 feet and it's supposed to be 143 per, per, the, per the county, record, per the, uh, the county uh, requirements. Um, I know a house up above me uh, was approved for construction uh, people moved in it, it sold three times, and I called the county, I said, why do you keep approving this piece of property with an, a, a direct burial septic system sitting on top of the ground? No reason given. There was also a leach field that was leaking in a parking lot at a restaurant, and they, they required that they go back and uh, change out, uh, the, they put in, I guess, 300-pound grease traps and the place went out of business. My big concern was it was all 25 feet within a well, which is my water source. So the county doesn't go out there and look at, inspect these pieces of property before they're, they're set, as far as the uh, county records go, as far as the, where they place and how they're saturated in the, in the area, as far as their dimensions. And I just don't have a good, good feel about if somebody goes up there and builds, they're gonna be cutting out probably 300 yards, where are they gonna put that material? And they're gonna be changing the landscape and creating a flood zone for me and for the other property next to me. And sir, what was your name again? John Dixon. So Mr. Dixon, um, this is actually in my district. So what I'd like to do as, as the chair, I don't make motions, but maybe if one of my colleagues would be willing to do a motion to continue, then we can sit down with you sure. uh, and have more discussion before yeah. we move forward on this item. Yeah. So I really do appreciate uh, you guys coming down today. Yeah, yeah I, I don't care if they build a house up there and look down at my house and look at my windows and all that. Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned about the flood issue. Yeah, the well, rainwater coming off that hill. Well, and 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 we we're concerned about that since we're also the members of the board of directors of the flood control district. So yeah. thanks for coming in, right. and we'll we'll get we'll make sure we get your information, and we'll follow up with okay. you. Thank you if very much. if if the motion to continue passes, I don't want to okay. assume what uh, my colleagues are going to do here. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, I would, these are all in my district, <laughs> all three of these items. <laughs> and, and are all three of these hooked to the same issue we're talking about then? Yeah. Is it, uh, no, which, which Oh, they're not. Yeah, specific, my apology. Which yeah. Specific item? Yeah, which, item 16. On 16. Okay, item 16. thank you. Good clarification. So I was just looking for a motion to continue uh, on Mr. item Chairman, 16. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to continue item number 16. Okay. We have a motion to continue. Second. Okay. All right. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Again, thank you. We'll, we will Excuse get me, in Chairman. touch with you. Yes. Is this being continued to the June 22nd? Uh, yes. Thank you. That was my, that, that, that was, uh, okay. I think so. Yeah. Well, what about item 17, 18? Well, yeah, we'll get there. So we got, yeah, so, so motion continued to the 22nd passes. So that's now, okay. Mo uh, yeah. Now the, the board will consider item 17 and 18. Mr. Chairman, I would make the motion to approve item number 17 and number 18. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes.
Under County Officers, Board of Supervisors, 19, reappointment to the Building Code Advisory Board. Clerk of the Board, 20, application for Anthem Fireworks Display, 21, special event licenses for Anthem Rotary Foundation. Board will now consider items 19 through 21. Uh, is there any comments? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move approval items 19 through 21. Thank second. you. Thank you. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Constables 22 fix the salaries of the constables and 17 justice precincts. County Attorney 23 accept Governor's Office of Highway Safety 2022 Proposition 207 funding. 24 victim compensation funding from the Arizona Criminal Justice Commission. The board will now consider items 22 through 24. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 22, 23, and 24. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Under the Sheriff, 25 through 28, amend agreements and IGAs with Town of Gila Bend, Fountain Hills, and Arizona Department of Public Safety in the City of Phoenix. 29 through 31, IGAs in agreement with City of Globe, Coolidge, and Grand Canyon University. The board will now consider items 25 through 31. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve items 25 through 31. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Vice Chairman Hickman. Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, additionally, under the Sheriff, 32 addition to Fleet, 33 application and acceptance of funding from the Office of National Drug Control Policy, 34 and 35, non-cash donations, 36, detention officer employee referral incentive extension, 37, FY 2022 budget adjustment for fuel. Big one out there. Mm -hmm. The board will now consider items 32 through 37. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 33. 32 through 37. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Under the Treasurer, 38 offers on tax deeded land parcel 300-34-018F. The board will now consider items uh, 38. Mr. Chairman, I would move approval that we adopt offer number two. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Do we have a second on offer number two? Second from Supervisor Galvin. Madam Clerk, please call the roll on offer number two. Supervisor Sellers is absent. Supervisor Galvin? Yes. Supervisor Hickman? Yes. Supervisor Gallardo? Yes. Chairman Gates? Aye. Uh, the motion passes unanimously. Under County Management, Assistant County Manager Leanne Bone, 39, American Rescue Plan Act, Expenditure Approval, 40, Membership Renewal of Maricopa County Workforce Development Board Members. The board will now consider items 39 and 40. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 39 and 40. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously under county offices. Air quality, FY22 substantive policy statement certification. 42 through 43, amend intergovernmental service agreement with the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. Under animal care and control, 44 through 49, sheltering agreements and IGAs as listed on the agenda. 50, IGA with Town of Fountain Hills. 51, Jody A. COSO Irrevocable Trust Approval of Accounting and Release, 52, New Hope Agreement, 53, PetSmart Charities Adoption Partner Agreement. The board will now consider, yes. We do have a speaker form from Diane Barker to speak on items 41, 42, and 43 in favor. Okay. All right. So why don't we take a motion on it? If it's all, well, yeah, let's, let's just uh, have uh, Ms. Barker. Good to see you. Why don't you join us now on items 41 through 43? Good morning. This is Diane Barker and I'm in district five. Uh, my supervisor is Steve Gallardo. 
Um, next week, I will be celebrating the birthday of three decades living in Maricopa County and basically in Phoenix, even though, as you can hear, you know, maybe I'm a little raspy. I did ride my bicycle down here, and there is a lot of downtown that's all turned turned up and a lot of particulars particulates, and you know we're in a serious part of that. So I still advocate for us to cut down on emissions. And in regards to 41, 42, and 43, I do speak in favor of it. Basically, I don't like to do that until I read these documents, because it's the agreement between the county and the state, and many times... I do find something that I take issue with. But because Phil Neely is the control officer, I'm going to say okay and just want Mr. Neely to know he'll hear from me if I find a disparity. But uh, this is a certification, then the uh, lawn emissions agreement, and then the diesel. And I'd say about the lawn emissions, I'd like to see these blowers, you know, more sweeping rather than blowing, and certainly in the interior of large, dense areas, because it creates asthma, asthmatic problems. And then the diesel, I think that that's good that if they're going to cut down on emissions, I ride the natural gas express buses, and I encourage you to do that in these times of high gasoline. And in less than 20 minutes last week, I got from downtown up to Bell Road and the Piasqua Freeway in less than 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate those comments. All right. Do we have a motion to approve uh, items 41 through 53? Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item number 41 through 53. Thank you. And we have a second. Thank you. Motion and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Under elections, 54, precinct committeemen. The board will now consider item 54. Mr. Chairman, I move approval item number 54. Thank you, Vice Chair Hickman. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Motion in a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. All right. Motion passes uh, by a three to one vote. Next item is um, emergency management. 55, MOU securing the city's jurisdictional partners. Equipment services. 56, increase equipment services revenue and expenditure budget. Under finance, 57, funds transfers warrants. 58, designee for expenditure limitation report. 59, electronic funds transfer authorization. Under human resources, 60, health and wellness plans, 61, technical rate adjustment, 62, market ranges. The board will now consider items 55 through 62. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve items 55 through 62. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Under human services, 63 through 69, amend IGA's agreement, license, and leases with City of Scottsdale, Regional Public Transportation Authority, City of Tempe, Robin Schaefer Consulting, LLC, Portable Practical Education Preparation, Inc., First Presbyterian Church of Mesa, City of Chandler, 70 through 71, IGA's with the City of Phoenix and Avondale. The board will now consider items 63 through 71. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item, item number 63 through 71. Second. Thank you. For the motion and the second, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Human services continued, 72. Voluntary reallocation of U.S. Department of Treasury Emergency Rental Assistance Fund, 73. Appropriation Adjustment for Human Services Department Grant Fund, 74. Budget Revision to Grant Funds from U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Under Parks and Recreation, 75. Donations, 76. Non-exclusive Recreational trail easement, 77, MOU for Adobe Dam Perimeter Fencing Project. The board will now consider items 72 through 77. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of items 72 through 77. Thank, thank you, Supervisor Gardo. Supervisor Galvin. Uh, 
Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Under Procurement Services 78, Telephony Enterprise Support and Maintenance 79, Acela Software License Support and Maintenance Agreement. Under Public Health 80 through 85, Amend Contracts and IGAs with Tri Young Inc., Collaborative Research, Arizona Alliance for Community Health Centers, Dignity Community Care, Arizona Board of Regents on behalf of Arizona State University, Arizona Department of Health Services. The Board will now consider items 78 through 85. Chairman move approval items 78 through 85. Thank you, Vice Chair Hickman. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Under public health continued 86 through 89 agreements contract with Valleywise Health, Euling Consulting Inc., L, or, sorry, Consulting LLC, and Asian Pacific Community in Action. 90, notice of funding opportunity for grant funds from Centers for Disease Control. 91, funding authority increase for request for proposal contract with Delta Dental Plan of Arizona. 92, appointments to the Ryan White Planning Council. Board will now consider items 86 through 92. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 86 through 92. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin, for the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Under Real Estate 93, Purchase Agreement and Escrow Instructions. Under Transportation 94 through 95, Amend License Agreement IGA with Bentley Software and Flood Control District of Maricopa County. 96 through 98, IGA's Agreement with Arizona State University, City of Peoria, United States Department of Agriculture. The board will now consider items 93 through 98. Mr. Chairman, move approval items 93 through 98. Thank you, Vice Chair Hickman. Do we have a second? Second. Thanks for the second, Supervisor Galvin. Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Transportation continued, 99, change in traffic control on Naramore Road. 100, establish multiple speed zones on Naramore Road. 101, establish speed zone on Dean Road. 102 through 104, new traffic controls. 105, installation of no dumping signs on 191st Avenue. 106, transfer of county right of way to the city of Avondale. 107, easement right of way and relocation assistance documents. The board will now consider items 99 through 107. Mr. Chairman, move approval items 99 through 107. Thank you, Vice Chair. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Gallardo. Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now on to setting of hearings. Clerk of the Board, 108 Public Service Franchise, AT&T Corporation. 109, de-annexation from the city of Chandler and annexation to the town of Gilbert. Transportation, 110, road file number A651. The Board will now consider items 108 through 110. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of item 108, 109, and 110. Thanks, Supervisor Gallardo. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now on to the consent agenda, 111, application for treasurer's deeds, 112 through 114, mail ballot elections for Paloma Irrigation Drainage and Drainage District, Special Taxing District, Los Olivos IWDD number one, 115, donations, 116, treasurer's collections and investment summary, 117, duplicate warrants, 118, tax abatements, 119, secured, unsecured tax roll corrections. The board will now consider items 111 through 119. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve items 111 through 119. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Vice Chair Hickman. Motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, now we're going to recess as a Board of Supervisors and convene as the Flood Control District Board of Directors. We were talking about flood control earlier. So um, we will start with uh, 120 through 122, amend IGAs with the City of Litchfield Park, Mesa, and Sun City West. 123, 124, IGAs with City of Glendale and the Town of Fountain Hills. 125, MOU for the Adobe Dam Perimeter Fencing Project. 
126 non-exclusive recreational trail easement, 127 easement right-of-way and relocation assistance documents. The board will now consider items 120 through 127. Mr. Chairman, I motion, make a motion to approve items 120 through 127. Thank you, Supervisor Galvin. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Vice Chair Hickman. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now we will adjourn as the Flood Control District Board of Directors and convene as the Library District Board of Directors. We have two items, 128, an IGA with the Town of Queen Creek, and 129, amend the IGA with Deer Valley Unified School District number 97. <clears throat> the board will now consider items 128 and 129. Move to approve items 128 and 129, Mr. Chairman. Second. All right, thank you very much uh, for the motion in the second. Uh, and I, I uh, would be remiss if I didn't say thank you. As a graduate of the Deer Valley Unified School District, if I did not say thank you uh, to our partners at the Deer Valley Unified School District on the operation of the North Valley um, Library. Uh, and this has uh, been uh, very important uh, to our community up there and a lot of growth up there, not only in the community, but also in the school. And so to be able to continue this partnership uh, is something that's very important. I wanna thank the Superintendent Finch and everyone up there, uh, including members of the Deer Valley School District for their work on this. So with that, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And now we will adjourn as the Library District Board of Directors and uh, reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. Madam Clerk, do we have any uh, thing to report on public comment email responses first? Chairman, Supervisors, we did receive a few comments via email. We received one comment regarding the assessor's website, one comment regarding public comment and 29 comments regarding animal care and control, and all of these have been shared with all the board offices. <laughs> all right, thank you. Do we have any um, uh, statements for people who would care to speak at today's uh, meeting in person? We do have a few in person. If you would like, I can bring these to you. That would be great. Yeah, if you could bring those down, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, Randy Buslick. Is Randy Buslick here? Okay. All right. Um, next, Kim Schulze. We have Kim Schulze here. And again, I apologize if I mispronounce people's names. And again, just a reminder, we do have two minutes for everyone who's speaking today. Two minutes uh, to make your comment on anything that you wish to uh, speak on. We are unable to respond directly to your comments under the open meeting laws, but we may uh, direct the county manager to follow up uh, with you if, if that is appropriate. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kim Schultz, and I recently resigned from my position of behavior and training manager at MCACC. I've been involved with the shelter through four directors and until Dr. Jane's resignation had always believed the shelter could continue to improve. I had planned on spending the rest of my career here, but unfortunately decisions from current leadership have not aligned with what I professionally believe the shelter can and should be doing for the animals and the community. A shelter should have medical shelter and behavior staff. In November, Val Beckett disbanded the behavior team. I'm not sure why that decision was made and believe it was completely inappropriate for someone with no animal shelter experience to make that decision. How can one of the largest intake shelters in the nation operate without behavior staff? Local organizations all have behavior staff, AAWL, Humane Society, Heidi's Village, and many others. Yet the largest animal shelter in Arizona has none. When I started interviewing for manager positions with other organizations in the country, all were in disbelief that MCACC no longer has behavior staff. After I resigned, the volunteer coordinator was directed to not allow me to volunteer. The same week, the shelter sent out a plea for volunteers to come walk dogs because dogs had been sitting in their kennels for so long. Pinal and Pima County get their dogs out every day or close to it because they have shelter leadership well-versed in current animal shelter practices. Collectively, Maricopa County's current director and deputy director have less than one year of animal shelter work experience. For perspective, 
Frontline associates applying for a shelter lead position were recently denied interviews because they had less than one year's experience in an animal shelter setting or with animal handling. A desire to improve animal welfare and animal shelter experience is a necessity for effective shelter leadership. For productive decisions to be made, common sense is valuable as well. In the year 2022, animal care and control should be moving forward, not taking leaps and bounds backward. Thanks. Thank you very much for your testimony today. Next, Nancy Doyle. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. I am here today to talk about my concerns at MCACC, specifically with the increase of the number of animals dying in their kennels and clinic. I would like to discuss the data from 2017 to the present. In 2017, MCACC took in 32,789 animals, and 28, mainly dogs, died in the kennel or clinic, <clears throat> averaging two per month. In 18 and 19, they also averaged two per month. In 2020, the average increased to three per month, and in 21, the average increased again to four per month. In 2022, the average has now increased to eight animals per month dying in the kennel and clinic, while the intake number has continually decreased. If this trend continues, 56 more animals for a total of 98 will die by the end of 2022. Think about this. More animals have already died through May in um, this year than in all of 2017 while taking in 1,200 less animals per month. <clears throat> Excuse me, the majority of these animals are dying in their kennels. This is what is so alarming. In the last five years, the number of animals that have died increased 455%, while the intake rate has decreased 42%. Staff and volunteers have replete, repeatedly reported to the clinic about sick dogs and they still didn't get treatment and they died in their kennels. When a list of the dogs that have died was, was requested, the person was told that the report was not available. Has no one in management or clinic reviewed these deaths to determine how to avoid them and if all medical needs were met? Also, if the animal is showing severe signs of illness, why isn't the animal humanely euthanized instead of suffering in its kennel to die? I thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Ms. Doyle, for your testimony today. Uh, next is Deborah Ter What's that? Thank you. Appreciate you saving me there. <laughs> Thanks for coming down today. All right. It's been a long time since I've been here. I've been an advocate for the dogs for over 10 years. In the past, we've had a problem with intake and dogs being mislabeled. Right now, you currently have two dogs I'm going to discuss. First one being Davis. Davis is delisted to be killed tomorrow. He came in listed as a Parsons Russell Terrier. A couple days later, he was listed as a Pipple Mix. Big difference. One's 15 pounds, one can be higher. He's 35 pounds. Um, the picture they show of him does not even reflect what he really looks like. We're trying to save him right now. Um, so why was it changed at midpoint? If an owner's looking for their dog, they're not going to look for it under Parsons. You know, they'll never find it because they trust the integrity of Maricopa County, especially if you never lost your dog. So, you know, it's important to me to get these dogs home. You get less, more dogs home, less dogs stay in the shelter. Hey, it's a win-win. The next dog was, is, I want to talk about, is called Graham Graham. He came in, uh, she came in, and a guillotine fell on her foot and broke it. She has several fractures. She was at east, she went to west. Now they're asking for New Hope only to cover the cost of fixing her foot. You had par partners in the past that could help, two pups, well, Miss Bunn. Contact them and have them pay for it. Why should we, you know, the, New Hope Partners are very overwhelmed right now, taking a lot of medical dogs and a lot of behavior dogs. So let's work together as a team and get these dogs taken care of. Let's get them home or get them fixed as a team. It would be really nice if we could do that. So I appreciate your time. So, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much for the testimony, and I know that we're always 
you know, as staff is, is uh, paying attention to the comments that are made, particularly, I think there was a reference on... Two dogs Thank animals. you. What was going to happen with the dog in the, within the next 24 hours? Right. So gonna, if that's, if that's out, yeah, good. if we could look at that, I sure would appreciate that. Okay. Our final uh, speaker is uh, Diane Barker. Diane, again, thanks for joining us. Two minutes, as you know. Thank you, Chairman Gates and Board of Supervisors. I support public comment and why? Is this, and I'm thinking about my elementary education back in Ohio. And along with history, we had problems of democracy, and we were told we're supposed to participate with our government. It's not supposed to be you and us and we against one another. So I guess that's the reason why I'm here, even though some people know I'd rather be dancing. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I can, it's been a long time since Fran and I've had discussion with this. I'm glad to see that you have a written out note that pursuant to the open meeting law, board members may not discuss matters raised under this public comment portion of the meeting. However, an individual board member may respond to criticism made by those that address the board, ask staff to review the issue raised, or may ask that the matter be placed on a future agenda. And so I thank you for putting that on there. I think that's helpful because many times people don't understand that or, and I wanna thank Joy for being one of these people that just doesn't throw in the towel, doesn't pursue so that we can solve these problems that we need so we have, you know, a better community and democracy. And finally, I would like to have a brief meeting, it'll be only five minutes, with my supervisor, telephone, or in person, I'm downtown this afternoon. Is that possible? Is that criticism? That's criticism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, you can't answer, right? I'll be calling, yeah, you're, st this is staff, I'll be calling, thank you. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Okay. And those are all of our speaker forms for today. Thanks t uh, to everyone who both uh, sent us emails and then attended in person to provide public comment. This is the time now when uh, the folks up here on the dais have an opportunity to speak about anything they'd like to. So first I'll turn to our 25 year veteran county manager, Joy Rich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have nothing to add today. Thank all right. You. Thank you so much. Supervisor Gallardo. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Um, uh, District 5 is lucky to have a new face in our office. I think many of you had an opportunity to meet him. We do have an intern this summer, Angel Vega. There he is. Stand up, dude. Stand up so they can all see you. Don't be shy. Angel will be with us uh, this summer. He is heading to ASU in August. Uh, Angel is a, a bright young man who has come in and you can see, so we sit in our office and we talk and we gossip about all you guys and-, and uh, I can hear you. Yeah, and no, we, we, we sit down and we talk and, and uh, he sits there and he's asking questions. Like he really wants to know how government runs and works and so he gets the first hand uh, look at uh, how we operate here in Maricopa County. Uh, I've known Angel uh, for a very long time. He is a pitcher. Uh -oh. uh, in baseball, mm. um, but now he wants to go be an engineer or something like that. But nonetheless, he's a he's a bright young man. He uh, I know his family very well. His his uh, family is very uh, active in the in uh, one of my parks out there in Levine. Um, but thank you, Angel, for joining us. We look forward to over the next couple of months to seeing you in District Five. Wonderful. Yeah. Welcome, Angel. Supervisor uh, Galvin. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, it's been fun crisscrossing District 2 as usual, but um, really enjoyable the last couple of weeks. Uh, first of all, I was honored to um, be hosted by the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. And I met with President uh, Burnett and Vice President Russell, and they gave me and Dan Gardner from my office a terrific tour. Uh, we looked at their farm where they're growing pecans and citrus. And uh, it's just amazing and always a reminder that Arizona sends products and crops all around the world. Uh, we looked at their school for early childhood education, um, fantastic stuff that they're doing there. 
And we saw the Wicopa Casino, which they're very proud of and is doing tremendous work for, um, for that community. And I also went to the Salt River Pima Indian community as well and met with the president and members of the council. Once again, was given a fantastic tour. Dan came along and we were face to face with wild horses. And that was just an amazing reminder of the beautiful uh, animals we have here in our midst. These are wild horses running along and uh, we were seeing with them right when they were drinking water. And then we took a tour of the new health facility, which is incredibly impressive, 200,000 square feet. Um, there were 40 different bays just for dental patients alone. So you get the scale and scope of what these people now have available to them, which is terrific. And finally, I want to talk about the town of Gilbert. You know, uh, part of your role as a county supervisor is to work with the jurisdictions with your county. And so last week, we had a very good working meeting with the mayor of Gilbert, Bridget Peterson, Councilman Jan Kaprowski, the town manager, Patrick Banger, several members of staff. We talked about a variety of issues which are impacting and intersecting between Gilbert and the county. And I think we worked in a very good and productive fashion. And I think that's what it's all about working here from this position is to reach out to the towns and have them reach out to you, let them know that the lines of communication are open. And so I really appreciate Gilbert raising some issues for our attention that we've been working on ever since. So thank you. Thank you very much. Vice Chair Hickman. Uh, I'm really happy that I get to beat uh, you to the punch on this one, but happy birthday to our <laughs> colleague, Tom Galvin. Um, I cannot believe that you're that old. Uh, so. Uh, everybody looks like a kid to me at my age now. So um, congratulations on that, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you. A um, uh, couple things. Uh, number one, I had a great breakfast meeting with all the constables in my district uh, last week and went over a couple things. It's kind of funny. They didn't even bring up. Uh, they said the support that the board has shown towards the constables. Enjoy. They uh, pointed you out, too on how that whole role has uh, evolved and what a great job those guys are doing in the community and ladies are doing in the community. And they wanted to thank, thank us for the support. And then I see we're voting them for a raise. So they didn't even bring that up. Um, but a great, great conversation about what's going on in the community, uh, how they are taking a look at best practices on other constables uh, throughout the nation when it comes to homelessness and and evictions and uh, trying to bring a, um, a soft touch to it of what's going on uh, nationwide. So hope they'll continue on that and, I, and, we, and we pray for their safety and all, all law enforcement as this, as this country seems to be going through some things and uh, hope, that, hope that all of us uh, can keep our family safe and, and definitely keep the law enforcement arm uh, safe as well uh, for, for the families. Uh, but last but certainly not least, um, when I, uh, when I um, seeked appointment to this board, uh, sought, there, there's my lawyer, sought appointment to this board, uh, and I was listening to your statements about you got appointed and then how much Joy helped you and her staff and the county uh, welcomed you the best we could. Uh, I did the same thing, and I was a fish out of water to uh, that, that moment. And um, I was lucky enough, you didn't, but I acquired an operating staff uh, from Max Wilson. And um, I, when I met Scott, I said, hey, love to keep you on, uh, but you're gonna try to find out how to work for me. And um, you are, I'm also gonna have to find out how I can work with you. And these past two years um, have been incredible, and I don't know how I would have been able to do it without my staff, Michelle and Scott. And I've always viewed two people around me in this job um, as almost Bobsy twins. Anytime we needed to get something fixed, it was um, bringing in our, our county manager, Joy Rich, and uh, having my chief of staff there. So I find it very appropriate today to because I know he doesn't want to do this, and I know that um, he doesn't like to take pictures, but the 20-year pin for Scott Isham, uh, I get to award that uh, to him. We'll take a couple, couple pictures there. So congratulations, Scott. You've made it through eight years of my madness and uh, a couple years with Michelle with he us, too. He lost all his hair. <laughs> yeah, so congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
Great. Congratulations, Scott. That's that's wonderful. Amazing to, to eight years with the vice chair. That is that is fantastic. And happy birthday, uh, Tom Gavin. Your first birthday you're celebrating as a member of this board. And uh, just hope you have a great day. Sounds like you're going to be uh, supporting the economy in District 2 this evening. So that's, that's good to hear. Um, really had some wonderful opportunities the last couple weeks to get out and, and represent the county at a few different things. Yesterday, I went up to the uh, American Legion Boys State uh, in, in uh, at, up at NAU, which I've done uh, several years, uh, go up there and do a court demonstration for them. And then also we have about 150 students from, these are junior, rising seniors, uh, boys, obviously at Boys State, and had a chance to talk about what we do here at the Board of Supervisors, and uh, had a chance to talk about the property tax uh, decrease uh, that this board approved, and they were very excited to hear that. So wonderful to go there. And then I also had the chance to attend uh, at, I was at William Jewell College, which is outside of Kansas City, with the Truman Foundation presented me with the Stevens Award for um, Lawyer in Public Service. And that award was not to me. That award, I believe, was to all the employees of Maricopa County, particularly those who work in elections. I think that was a recognition of the incredible work that they've done uh, over the last couple of years, uh, really defending our democracy. And then finally had the chance to speak at the President Bush's library on a panel. Um, there were several folks there, including the former president who attended, but this was a whole session on democracy, uh, defending the work being done by, by elections workers. I actually spoke on a panel with the uh, Secretary of State of the state of New Mexico. So just uh, so many people came up and just gave supportive comments, again, for our entire elections team, the recorder, uh, Scott Jarrett, Ray Valenzuela, and everyone. So just an honor to be there and talk about the incredible work that's been done by the Maricopa County team. Uh, Joy Rich talked about that earlier, and that's that's why we're all here on the dais, is for all of them and the team from our our staff, Zach Shira, my chief of staff, and, and deputy chief of staff, Chelsea Lett, and, and everyone here. It's just an incredible team, and I'm honored to be a part of that. So with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Bye.